On the heels of that United Airlines fiasco out of Chicago a couple of weeks ago, a passenger now saying he was booted off a Delta flight for using the bathroom while the plane was waiting to take off. Terry Sater with our affiliate WISN is on the story. Cell phone video of Milwaukee man Kima Hamilton's interaction with Delta last week when other passengers realized he was being kicked off the Milwaukee bound flight from Atlanta for going to the bathroom. I need more information, sir. I'm, 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 I haven't done anything. I've paid for this ticket and I actually have, I have to get home. Hamilton told us the plane was delayed taking off and he couldn't wait any longer to use the bathroom. Sometime later, it's, you know, we're still. Taxi, the plane hadn't moved, and this, and, and it's at a, it's at an emergency stage now. I've seen this happen on planes before. I never heard of someone being removed. Fellow passenger and lawyer Krista Rosalino was sitting next to Hamilton and started recording because she didn't feel Delta was treating Hamilton like a person. What did you think of Delta's response on the plane? Uh, the first person they sent on was very rude to him. I thought. <laughs> It's almost ironic that, you know, we, we don't have the 10 minutes to have this conversation, but we have an hour and a half to stall everyone. After a second Delta worker talks to Kima for several minutes, Kima decides to leave, and he's greeted by FBI agents who decide not to arrest him. He said he could arrest me, um, but after our conversation, realized that that wasn't, that some of the language that was used, that some of the language that was associated with my name wasn't accurate. Delta has refunded part of Hamilton's ticket, but uh, didn't reaccommodate him. In a statement, Delta says, Our flight crews are extensively trained to ensure the safety and security of all customers. It is imperative that passengers comply with crew instructions during all phases of flight, especially at the critical points of takeoff and landing. Joining us on the story from Washington, the president of the International Association of Flight Attendants, Sarah Nelson, who has more than 20 years of experience as a flight attendant. Uh, Sarah, give us a sense. You know, on the one hand, look, I think we can all, um, you know, sympathize with the guy. We've been there. Uh, and, and oftentimes you might think, oh, it's just a kid who can't hold it when they're young. But it can happen to an adult, too. What happens when there's an emergency? What's the protocol there? Well, when the aircraft is on the ground and it's about to take off, flight attendants are usually getting information about how close we are to that takeoff time. And you get a takeoff slot and you've got to hit that slot time. Of course, the airline is very interested in getting the flight off on time, not having passengers inconvenienced and not having that plane be delayed for the next flight uh, at the destination that it's going to. So uh, the flight attendants uh, have are trained in safety procedures and safety instructions, and they would be advising the passengers to stay seated with their seatbelts uh, buckled. It's a little difficult to pass judgment on this particular incident since we weren't there and didn't see uh, um, all of the events uh, tran uh, transpire. But um, the passengers really need to stay in their seats with their seatbelts fastened, especially as the plane is about to take off. That's a critical phase of flight where the passenger could fall on someone else, they could hurt themselves, um, and we've seen it happen. And so those regulations are in place for a reason. You know, there's regulations in modes of transportation. So if you're driving a car, you have to drive on the right side of the road, you have to follow the stop sign, um, you have to get a license in order to drive. And flight attendants are certified safety professionals. People have a license to fly, but those flight attendants are certified in order to enforce those safety regulations that are in place to keep people safe. And I think most people get that. They get they get that flight attendants are doing their job, and it is a difficult job, and, and probably one that's thankless a lot these days. I will give you that. But when there is an emergency like this, I mean, I have flown a lot in my life, not as much as you, but a good amount. And on more than one flight, we have been stuck waiting on the tarmac, either on the way out or on the way in. And I've seen someone call the flight attendant over and say it's really an emergency. And I have seen it happen in cases where they've said, okay, you can get up and use the restroom. So when would that be okay one would a flight attendant be trained or have the experience to say okay i get it you can go to the bathroom i'm gonna let them know make it quick 
Yeah. So the flight attendants are required with enforcing the safety regulations, but they're, we're also in the business of managing people. And we recognize that there are going to be people who have an emergency, who have um, an, a physical need, and uh, we are going to check to make sure that they're going to be safe if they're going to get up. So it's difficult to say what happened there, what all the facts were in that scenario. But flight attendants do this on a daily basis where we enforce the safety procedures, but we're not necessarily cut and dry because we're dealing with people all the time. And we may get more information. We're going to check with the uh, flight deck to make sure that it's safe for someone mm -hmm. to get up. But we will make an exception um, when we're able to do that and when we're able to do it safely. Sarah Nelson, good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as promised by United Airlines, this morning the company announced 10 policy changes to prevent another customer disaster like the one we talked about extensively from earlier in the month. Uh, tough to forget the viral videos showing a United passenger being forcibly dragged off the plane by aviation officers after he refused to give up his seat to accommodate crew members. United CEO Oscar Munoz telling NBC's Today Show the April 9th incident in Chicago taught him their policies were too strict and left little room for common sense. Our policies and procedures put those folks involved that day in impossible situations. They're dated and they're built on a structure of discipline and rigor and running an operation. Some of the most significant changes announced, United is now upping the incentive to get you to voluntarily give up your seat to $10,000. Not in every case, of course, but they can go as high as $10,000. Also, once you are in your seat, you will not be asked to give it up unless it is for safety or security reasons. Also, uh, United saying they won't call officers on board to remove a passenger unless, again, it is for reasons of safety or security. The airline is also cutting back on overbooking flights. Again, just a reminder, this was not a case of overbooking on the flight out of Chicago to Louisville. Uh, and also, traveling crew must be booked an hour before departure. In a statement, the attorney for Dr. David Dow, the passenger who was forcefully, forcefully removed a few weeks back, says, quote, Dr. Dow applauds United for promptly addressing the many issues that have plagued passenger satisfaction in the arena of airline customer service and hopes United takes the lead in inspiring the entire airline industry.